digging through my toolbox here trying to find uh, a wheel bolt from a permobile chair. Uh, we're building another M300 to use for power soccer and somehow the wheel bolts like went away. I don't, we might've used them for something else, I'm not sure. But I'm about to go to the hardware store and see if we can buy some. Um, I can't find the one I have in here, so I think I'm just gonna go ahead and pull one off of the steampunk chair over here and take that with me to the store. Um, I actually just did that. It's been in my hand. I was trying to film things in order, but anyways, uh, let's go to the hardware store and see if you can actually buy these things. All right, we now have some hardware. Stay. Wheel bolts uh, that should fit on wouldn't be a wheelchairs. I should probably put this one back in the chair though before I forget because I'm not the best at remembering things. Although I'm probably gonna put this in finger tight and then forget about it because, well, at least it's in there. I'll tighten that down later. I might have a problem. This scooter thing is a drug. I happened to be back in town and I noticed near where I was at, there was one that had a $20 bounty. So I went out here and looked for it. It's kind of in a park. It's not here. But when I pull up the history, it has is basically a straight line all the way from the repair shop. So that tells me that there's probably a GPS issue with it. And that scooter, is probably in the repair facility, which is right there. So what I'm gonna do, since I'm done with my stuff here, I'm gonna go pick up maybe two or three of these. Two of them have 46% battery and one of them has like 12%. I don't wanna pick that one up because it's gonna take too long to charge, but I'm probably gonna grab these two and then I'm gonna go back to the shop and uh, see if this scooter is in fact in the shop because I can still get paid for that. Uh, if it is in their shop, all I have to do is scan it and then release it. And the battery's at 100%. So, um, that might be an easy 20 bucks. Like I said, it's kind of a lot of work, but if I can find these scooters that are fully charged, which come up occasionally, um, I've, like a few of the ones I picked up that need to repair were at 100%. If all I'm doing is grabbing them and then dropping them off, I can probably deal with that. But I don't know. It's, um... I think I'm addicted. All right, so these three scooters here are actually inside someone's garage. Uh, I checked with a few of the neighbors and they don't they don't have phone numbers or really even know who lives there. So, meh, I guess on to the next. Well, and by that I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I think I might've found a little niche thing to do. Niche, niche, whatever. Um, so I'm finding a bunch of scooters that are broken and it turns out if I email support for the company, they'll pay me the full amount when I drop them off at repair. So, I've been running around the area that's very close to the repair facility, and basically I just take pictures, tell them what's wrong, and I just have to wait for them to email me back, and then I can just drop them off like one block away from here. So, I don't know, it's still a lot of work moving these things in and out of the van. I think maybe putting a trailer hitch on this and putting some sort of rack on the back might be a way to do it, but then I'm still lifting stuff, so, I don't know. I just, I, I know it's not the ideal situation, but I feel like there's just free money laying all over the place on the map, you know? Um, so I'm still poking around at it. Okay, oh my gosh. Um, this van broke again. I don't want you to watch and see what it takes for me to keep this vehicle going straight with the steering wheel. Either the alignment uh, shop that I took this thing to didn't tighten something down or something is pretty seriously broken. Just so you know, I'm driving down a straight road right now. Look how much I can move the wheel going straight. That's um, fairly substantial. Earlier today, I was going down the freeway and I went to pass someone and uh, I was going probably 45. And I didn't pin the throttle, but I hit it pretty hard. And this thing got all squirrely on me. I'm like, okay, now, I know I've done some performance mods, but this thing does not have enough power 
to break the front tires loose going 45 miles an hour uphill on a freeway. Um, so then throughout the day, everything started getting a little bit weirder. And now I can tell when I turn, one of the tires is not connected to the other one. So I don't know if this thing has a drag link. I can't remember. I think it just has tie rods. But um, yeah, as you can see, something is pretty seriously loose. Look at this. I'm going straight and look how much I'm moving the wheel. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> okay, engine's off. And this is how much play we have. And I can hear something flopping around under the floor out there under the hood. So, it's starting to get dark. I'm gonna grab a flashlight and see if I can see anything. Look at that tire up there and look at what I'm doing with the steering wheel. Nah. Okay, well, um, I couldn't really see anything like behind the tire and it's starting to get dark outside, so I'll look at the van tomorrow. This thing with the electric scooters, I, I know I should let it go, but I am just kind of going around the area where their shop is and finding broken ones and dropping them off. Like 85% of all the scooters I come across are broken. So I had an idea and I'm gonna see if they will take me up on it, but I sent them an email and I was like, look, a lot of your scooters are broken. We got rainy weather now. So you probably want someone to go around and check them and let you know if they're broken because there's a ton of scooters parked all over town. And my thought is they could just pay me to go around and look at them all and do a quick evaluation, make sure there's tread on the tires, there's no wiring hanging out, you know, water damage, things like that. They replied back and said, yeah, that sounds like it might be interesting. Uh, they're gonna forward the information to the local office here in Portland and get back to me. I have no idea if that would work or what they would pay me or anything, but I don't know. I feel like there's gotta be some way I can make a little bit of money doing this. But once yet again, I'm, I'm still kind of intrigued by the whole situation. And I don't know, it just seems like I should be able to make a little bit of money on the side, uh, in theory. There is something interesting though right now. I was attempting to have someone retrofit the uh, lights in here with the LED um, retrofit bulbs. Just use the word retrofit a lot. Anyways, it's these things here. Um, turns out these actually are glass. I couldn't tell if they were plastic or not. And the way we found out is someone put them in one of the light fixtures. I flicked on the light and spontaneously one of the bulbs just fell out of the ceiling. So we have this and as you can see, it's very clearly glass. But what's interesting is we've got a strip of LEDs here. We've got a power converter. Um, so what I wanna do is pull the rest of the glass off of this and see if we can use this LED strip for anything. Uh, Cause that seems like usable parts to me. So we have to figure out a safe way of removing the rest of the glass from this. That LED strip is just basically glued inside there. But I think I have an idea. I have wrapped, wrapped, the. I've wrapped the remaining part of this bulb with some uh, tape. And uh, we're gonna use the Kentucky Speed Wrench here and see if we can get the rest of this removed. And then I think maybe a heat gun or something like that to remove the uh, glue from the back of this. I don't know, I might very quickly give up on this, but I'm just curious. Oh boy. It appears as though we have two power converters. We've got one on this end and one down here on this end. I'm not sure if they work together or what exactly is going on. It appears to be glued in there though. Uh, hmm. I'm gonna poke around at this a little bit and see if this is something I even wanna mess with because Glass. Check it out, I found a heat gun. <laughs> so I think I've got some gloves uh, I'm gonna put on 
and I believe I did it with a knife here with a cold. I'm gonna heat this up and then I can just use this utility knife to cut the glue and the glass is stuck to the glue. So I think between the heat and the knife, uh, we should be able to get this thing off of here. Now I'm gonna go grab my gloves and then uh, see if we can make this work. Uh, you know you're expected to do strange things when someone walks in and sees me here with a hammer and a light bulb and a space heater <laughs> and uh, asks a question about something uh, that they need help with doesn't say anything about any of this <laughs> because that's expected of someone like me. <laughs> uh. Now it looks like here we have a transformer of some sort and some sort of capacitor. This almost looks like a um, like a boost, like boost circuitry. Although I don't know why we need boost circuitry to run LEDs, unless uh, oh maybe it's a uh, this might be a rectifier. Eh, actually, I'm not sure. But I think I've decided though I'm going to abandon this project because even though I heat up the glue and even though the glass peels off, there's little tiny shards that go flying everywhere. Um, so I think I'm gonna package this up and not screw with this and then vacuum up the floor. As cool as it would be to use a giant LED strip like this for things, um, yeah, this isn't, uh, I'm full of good ideas recently. I'm just looking at the traces on this little board here and you can see that all these LEDs are running in series. We've got a trace along the top that basically runs down the whole length, same with the bottom, and there's three wires coming off here, but we have three banks of series LEDs. If you look right here, you can see that the end of the first series ends right here, and the second series starts down here, and then we continue on down to another point right here. I'm gonna look at this a little more and see if I can figure out how this thing's arranged. I think I've figured out how this thing's wired. We have three groups of series LEDs that are all paralleled together. So we have a section right here and all those LEDs are in series. So each one's gonna use, uh, let's see, three volts. And we've got, let's see, we've got 41. Uh, are they three volts or are they 1.5? Hey Siri, what's 41 times three? It's 123. Oh, there we go. All right, so the LEDs are running on three volts each and they have groups series together to get approximately 123 volts. Now, your house runs on 110 or 120 or 115 or whatever you want to say. Around here, it's 120. So, uh, this... I believe is a, it's weird there's a transformer on there, but I believe this is a an AC to DC rectifier. And down here is the other portion of it. But we have one, two, three sections of them all paralleled together. So anyways, that's how, that's how it works. I'm, for some reason I was just curious what was inside these and if they were bumping the voltage up or down or what they were doing exactly. Although it probably doesn't really matter anyway whatsoever but I'm gonna get this cleaned up. I was just cutting up the uh, circuit board to uh, get everything fit in a bag to throw it away and I noticed there's 123 LEDs on here. Now if I remember our math was 123 volts. Coincidence? I think not. I'm saving these little driver boards though and I'm gonna look these up and see exactly what these are. Other than just being some sort of strange nerd you may be wondering why I care about this. Well some of these LED retrofit bulbs work, but not in every fixture. Uh, like these ones work in this style of fixture, but there's some other ones inside the house that they will not work inside of. And I'm curious what the difference is and what these little bits are actually doing and what kind of power input they are expecting to see. Because right now, near as I can tell, 
you just have to buy a bunch of different brands of LED retrofit bulbs and try them. I wanna see if there's a way we can figure out how to know exactly what's gonna be going on as opposed to just buying a bunch of different random stuff. Plus, I don't know, it's, um, I guess like Big Clive, if you ever watch his channel, uh, it's a circuit board autopsy. <laughs> Okay, it's um, the next day. Let me fix the exposure on this. Actually, I think we need a little bit more light. Got this light right here. There we go. Okay, so, van, broken, probably. Still drives, yeah, is it safe? Probably not. Is it actually gonna break if I drive it? Probably not, but, what the heck? Um, we've got a few things. So we've got a flashlight and these rechargeable batteries from that Bluetooth speaker that I tried to get to work and it didn't exactly. Um, how long are these threads? Jeez. Are these rechargeable batteries slightly bigger? I think they are. Well, probably gonna regret that later. <laughs> I don't know if those are ever coming back out of there. Okay, now we have light and a camera on a stick. What we're gonna do is use this camera on a stick. I thought that was a lot longer. <laughs> That's the dumbest selfie stick ever. Um, and the flashlight, and we're going to look behind the wheels on the van and see if we can figure out what's broken as far as stuff and things uh so let's go do that oh there's one more very important thing coffee let's uh let's look at the footage here and see what we're dealing with. So this system just has tie rods. There's no drag link or anything. There's just um, basically the steering rack and then one tie rod on each end. So it's a pretty simple setup. I'm about 95% sure the um, passenger side um, tie rod end is bad. Again, this picture of the passenger side one you can see how this thing has been rotating like crazy. There's a ball on the end of the bolt that sort of hooks in the end of that thing. And as it wears, you know, it's supposed to have some movement, but as it wears out, it becomes very loose and in theory could eventually pop out of there, but it shouldn't be having that extreme side to side movement like that. And the rubber boot that's supposedly keeping the dust and dirt out should never be going up that high. So, um, I'm gonna go ahead and say that is tie rod failure. So now we have to fix it. I feel like it's probably something I could do. I don't have tools here though. Um, I could probably call some friends and they could come help me. I don't know, I might call a shop, I guess, <laughs> and, and see what they charge. Uh, tie rods for this thing are normally like 35 bucks or something crazy cheap and it really shouldn't be that much labor. Uh, I think the guy, I think it was like a half hour or something like that. But anyways, um, yay, it's broken again. I'm actually watching a teardown video on one of these bulbs here to see exactly what's going on or if he has insights. They're very simple circuit board on this side here. Let's just pull these out of the assembly and take a look at them. There's actually, uh... I could be completely wrong. I could be completely wrong about this, but what I think we have going on here is I know this is a full bridge or full wave rectifier right here. So this little board, which is now on the floor, converts the AC to DC. This other bigger board, which as it turns out, has a little tiny logic controller right here, which houses the software to operate this thing. 
this thing does, this is a buck boost converter. It'll step up or step down, uh, whatever the voltage needs to be. But this thing also has the capability of dissipating spikes in voltage. Like for example, if you have a fluorescent light fixture that has a starter built into it. This thing is designed to basically work in all situations. So they can manufacture the bulb and ship it wherever they want. Wherever the voltage is 110, 120, 115, 220, 230, 240, pretty much anywhere, this bulb will work uh, with pretty much any configuration. So this thing is set up to, well, the other board that's on the floor now converts your AC into DC. And then this board uh, basically does all the conversion that is necessary to drive the LEDs and also take care of any spikes and voltage that may happen due to starters or other things that maybe stuff and things. I, I'm, I'm done with this. In my mind, it makes sense now. Um, I, I tried looking up a teardown, but it was for a much more simple version of the bulb, one that has to have the ballast bypassed and that didn't really tell me anything. So what I did was I just started looking at the back of this and then I, was, I searched around for a logic controller, which is this little guy right here. Let me see if I can zoom in on that. Yeah, there we go. This little guy right here with the six pins coming off of it is our logic controller. So that houses all the software to tell this thing what to do and to drain off voltage or boost it or uh, pull the voltage down or whatever it needs to do. So anyways, um, enough of that. The policy that was presented to us for the other driver, there's not a policy in force. So you're saying they were driving uninsured? I mean, as far as I go, I don't know if they had a policy with another company, but there's but the State Farm policy that was presented to us, that one was canceled uh, se uh, several months ago. So, yeah. Um, that lady didn't have insurance, or at least she didn't give me the correct insurance card. I went back and looked at it later, or actually I went back and looked at it, and uh, it expired in 2016. Now when I, uh, the insurance company said that her policy expired a couple months ago, so yeah, they wouldn't tell me who or what. So I guess at this point I have to file a police report and then I can get her contact info. The problem was I was sitting there for like two hours. I started getting cold. I had to use the bathroom. So I wasn't quite thinking clearly by the time she showed up. Um, so I didn't ask for driver's license or phone number or anything like that, which I probably should have. Yeah, eh. It would be nice to have that e-brake working again though. <laughs> eh, I guess we'll see where this goes.